This week's episode of NRW is presented by Painted Visions, Comics, Cards, and Games in Woodbridge, Virginia. Stop in this week and use promo code NRW to save 10% on this week's new books. Hey, hey, what's going on? This is Patrick. And Adam. You are tuned into the New Release Wednesday show for the NRW of November 25th, right before Thanksgiving, dude. Yeah, very good. You well, ready to chow down, man? Oh, I'm ready for the uh, trip to Finn <laughs> All right, man, before we get into our Thanksgiving turkeys and all of that and the stuffing, um, let's talk about the new stuffing that The Walking Dead has added in by casting Negan um, for The Walking Dead. We have... Yes, uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. The dude who... Uh, who did he play on Watchmen? Uh, the Comedian. The Comedian. And I think he was awesome. I enjoyed him. No, he was pretty good. Um, and then a lot of the females will know him from that movie, P.S. I Love You. That he did Never with... seen it, dude. Oh, Is that a rom-com? Um, no, it actually sounds like the saddest movie I've ever heard in my entire life. It's about a husband that's dying. And so as he's dying to comfort his wife in his absence, he sets up a series of events to occur after he's gone. Oh, I remember like, that. on her birthday, she gets flowers from her husband that's been dead yes. for six months. Oh, wow. That sounds like a good way to get over somebody, right? <laughs> like, man, I'm, I really haven't thought about him in a couple months. Oh, look, he sent me flowers. That's cool. I'm just going to go cry in a corner for three years. All right, so what do you think about him being cast as Negan? Um, I think if we look at him from the angle of the comedian, that it's going to be just fine. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I think he was awesome. I, Despite a lot of people not digging how they changed the ending of the film Watchmen adaptation, yeah. I thought it was awesome. It is, it, I think it would have been difficult to have the octopus and all that stuff. Spoiler. Spoiler. Um, like it's spoiler but I, I enjoyed Watchmen, and so I think it's perfect casting. I'm looking forward to it. Well, the Watchmen is a prime example of that you need to just allow artistic creativity when it comes to these mediums being re-expressed. If you want the exact same story, Go read the same story. Like, people are allowed to put a little twist on it. Yeah. Maybe they didn't think that a giant octopus monster would work on the screen. Because, like, <laughs> it, one of my customers told me recently that these are for the everyman. So that works for us, but not everyone's going to enjoy a giant tentacle monster. Mm -hmm. I mean, but so they got to change it a little bit. It still worked out. It was still a fine movie. The overall tone was still the same. Definitely. So, I mean, people just need to get over that. It, if they want it to be the same thing, just go read the same thing. <laughs> so, uh, have you been seeing a lot of the new uh, casting castings that have been going on with some like the Netflix series? I think they recently cast Iron Fist. I'm trying to remember it as I'm talking about it right now. That one I didn't hear about. You didn't but hear I about that? Apparently the, uh, they did. I have been seeing the uh, leaks photos for Cumberbatch is Strange. Yes. And I also heard rumor, apparently, that the Daredevil uh filming is going so well with Punisher on set ah. that they're going to go ahead and fast track the Punisher show and potentially move Iron Fist to a two hour feature film. What was the name of that guy and who came from The Walking Dead? Uh, John Bernthal. I think he's awesome. Uh, I think he's a perfect cast. Yeah, no, I think he hits it well. Um, I think Shane's, the way he portrayed Shane yeah. is a really good Frank Castle just because he's crazy. He's lost something. <laughs> he wants Definitely. to kill people. He has, there's a look. There's a look that that guy has. Yeah, he's just got that stone cold killer look at times. So definitely, I mean, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing him play the Punisher. I think he's going to do fine. Gotcha. Last week, uh, Image Comics dropped a new book called Huck, uh, uh, from Mark Millar. Yeah, yeah, that and, uh, weird uh, mid country superhero esque kind of exactly. good old boy book. Have you heard that they're actually going to do a film adaptation of it? Um, it is Millar, so it, everything he writes becomes a movie. Exactly. Um, as my boss once told me, somebody said, hey, what's that Millar book? He's like, oh, the next movie. Exactly. Uh, and it, it happened to be the next movie I made. But yeah, no, it's about what if Tom Huck or Huckleberry Finn was essentially a superhero living in his small town, and everybody knows he's got these powers, but they just leave him alone because he helps the small town. Exactly. Until somebody else wants to exploit him. So, I mean, it, it only takes one apple to ruin the whole bunch, apparently. Gotcha. <laughs> So, but have you have you enjoyed like the Millar films, the Kickass stuff? I mean, they've all been great. Um, I know Kickass two, from what I've heard. Uh, I haven't read the um, one yet, but I've heard that they need to, or that there was a quite a um, editing on that because there's some <laughs> scenes in the comic book. Oh, you haven't seen the new movie? No, I think, oh, I think. But you didn't read the book. No, but I've been told there okay. are scenes in the book that definitely would not have translated to film at all. All right, but before we go into our next segment, I wanted to, to the the casting that I don't know if you heard on Huck yet. Because um, I know you're not really big into pop music that much. Oh. Rihanna. As who? I don't know yet. I haven't read Huck yet. But Rihanna's going to possibly be cast in the new Huck movie. Interesting. All right. 
Yo. Let's talk a little bit about gaming. Yes. Fallout 4, it's here. I've done nothing else since. Destiny finally got put down. <laughs> Do you got your Pip-Boy? I did not get the Pip-Boy edition. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I have learned to control. I was wondering what the fuck that was. I've seen everybody on my Facebook feed just, hey man, look at my new Pip-Boy, dude. I'm like, what the fuck is that? I'm not a Fallout guy. Yeah, we talked about Fallout 3 in the last thing. I have yet to play it. I will. I think I promised you I'd play it. Yeah, you lied. I'm sorry. I'm going to get into it, man. I'm going to. Patrick's a dirty but- liar. Whatever. All right. But no, it, all it is is just like the main interface the character uses in the game. Yeah. Uh, I, I've learned to control my inner fanboy and all my hobbies. Um, it helps keep money in the wallet. All right. So you didn't get the pit bull. I did not. Um, okay. I, it would be cool to have it. If you see it on what? sale, you'll pick it up. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but I, I just didn't want to play the game. Um, but now this game is so much better than New Vegas. Uh, I'm, everybody I've talked to is loving it. Um, so I'm really enjoying it right now. But uh, there's another game that I was looking forward to that apparently you're going to pull the trigger on. Is uh, I was looking forward to Battlefront, but I know with Bruh, Fallout, I'm not going to have any time. I'm super excited for Star Wars Battlefront, dude. Like, Actually, as of this taping, this coming weekend after this taping, I'm picking up. They have this Star Wars PlayStation 4 edition um, where it comes with like six Star Wars games that came out before. Okay. And uh, with Battlefront as well, I gotta, I gotta get it, man, because it just looks awesome, dude. No, it like, does. I am Star Wars crazy right now. The rest of the shows for this year, you will see me with my Star Wars shirt on. I didn't wear it today because I wanted to represent Valiant. But Star Wars, I'm like, I'm dying for Force Awakens, and the Battlefront game looks sick, dude. No, it 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 does look good. It, it really does. Just unfortunately, Battlefront's gonna be one of those games where it's. You're gonna, gonna do it. You're gonna I'm see gonna it. get You're into gonna hear it. Everybody's gonna be playing it's, it's it. It's gonna be a very repetitive game, and right now, Fallout being the in-depth. Dude, you're gonna kill it. By the end of this taping, you're gonna probably be up all night playing Fallout Four. You're gonna defeat it. Well, you're yeah, gonna, and you're gonna want gonna, a new challenge. Well, no, then I'm gonna have to go back and play as my sneaky silver tongue character that I'm gonna have to create. Then I'm gonna have to make my guy that loves running off the baseball, bat, basically Megan. Uh-huh. So I mean, there's so many different ways to play this game. You created. So going back to our first game, you basically created a Negan-style character. In Not Fallout yet, 4. but I have plans. To <laughs> I'm only hoping I can find Lucille in the movie. Oh, dude, shout out to uh, my girl Jen Tonin, who is on the uh, development team over at Bethesda Softworks on Fallout 4. Okay. Um, she actually has a character named after her in the game, All right. which is awesome. How dope is that? Um, that's you work at dope. the company, and they put you in the game. Uh, I can tell you the amount of characters in that game. That uh, Hopefully, they gave her uh, one to be memorable. I, I, she calls it the cut puncher. Uh, I didn't say it. Those are her own words. The cunt puncher. Okay, uh, I, I'm about to <laughs> keep an eye out for this character. Take a look out for that one. Other games you're looking forward to uh, for the rest of the year? Is the new Call of Duty drop? I think they call the new Call of Duty drop. Call what? It? Call of Duty I, three. I, I, there's you're over Black COD? Ops three. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Some yeah. jizz jazz. Didn't that Marvel. drop already? I, I believe it did, but I I stopped playing Call of Duty a couple years ago. You think everybody's just all about Fallout right now and Star Wars? That's no, like the no. really two hot games right now. That that are the big hot games for the big in depth gamers, but everybody's still playing Call of Duty. Yeah. So, like, that's number three on the list, you'd say. Yeah, the, Call of Duty is the layman's game. The layman's game. Ooh, he's calling out. Like, type in the comments how y'all feel about what he just said right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, blah, 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 blah. What am I th- wanting to say? Uh, there was another game I wanted to talk about. Or, is there anything else you're playing besides Fallout? No. Just, no, just, you're just, just, just Fallout. Fallout. Just Fallout, Fallout right now. Oh, yeah? That's all I'm really looking forward to. I mean... Well, going, hey. ba- you know, going back to Star Wars, uh, y'all heard me talk about Disney Infinity, the new 3.0. Um, right around, because The Force Awakens is getting ready to drop pretty yep. soon, there's going to be a new playset with, um, I think we have Ray is in it, uh, is, they've made a, l- a little Ray and Finn, and then we're going to actually have also their worlds to, to okay. work. So that'll be a new accompaniment playset to the whole Infinity franchise. Very interesting. You should get it, man. You don't have kids yet. I'm playing it with my little one. I, I, I've never gotten into the Infinity stuff, but it looks cool. It just, as an adult, I've realized time's a very limited thing, so i got to do it on the few things I enjoy. Gotcha. So it's, it's that or magic right now. All right, well, y'all need to go check that out. When you're done watching this video, go check out the new Fallout 4. I'm going to check it out. It looks awesome. I actually saw the trailer to it, too. And they actually had the Pip-Boys on them and all that stuff. It looks cool. I'm going to. He's like, you're, you're, you're saying that again, man. I don't believe you. <laughs> but I'm going to get Star Wars Battlefront first. Yeah, I know you'll get that one. It's awesome. So, so I'll just come over here and play Star Wars in front of my place and play Fallout. We'll do it. All right. All right, dude. Work that out. Hey guys, it's Adam, manager at Painted Visions. Feel free to stop in the store located at 3065 Galansky Boulevard in Woodbridge, Virginia and mention the promo code NRW to save 10% on this week's new books. If you're interested in Magic or any other card games, we do provide those. Feel free to stop in, ask about our subscription service where you can save 10% on your books and you get them pulled for you so you don't have to worry about beating the rush. 
All right, my man, what are you picking up this week for November 25th at the comic shop? Um, well, I, I feel kind of awkward doing this, but I've been preaching and loving the new, all new, all different Marvel and saying how it's going to be great. But just for the past couple of weeks, I've been excited about independent books. Of course, man. Um, <laughs> just, I mean, it's great with all these new Marvel characters being, you know, reestablished in this new universe. It's really cool, but... Sometimes it's nice to know that what I've been reading for 12 issues still matters. Yes. Um, so my pick this uh, week is going to be Outcast issue 13. Uh, it's been on a little bit of a hiatus as they were getting ready for this new arc. I'm sure they're probably busy as all get out with the show getting ready to happen and all that. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, on what, what series? Uh, um, I mean, what station? Cinemax. Channel? Cinemax. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. No, this, this show is going to be really good. Um, if you like possession style movies, Exorcist, I mean, this is exactly what this book's all about. This yeah. guy is really good at picking up on possessions, and he's got this preacher that's trying to help him fix it, even though he doesn't believe in God himself. So this man of God's got a, quite a task at hand of him to get this guy to do what he needs to. Um, but they've been they took a hiatus to get ready for this arc, and I'm really excited to see where it's going. Um, yeah. I, last we saw, his sister is now possessed, so. It's really interesting to see what's going to happen. The book's been a slow build, but the fire's burning hot right now. I enjoyed it. I read the first issue, I want to say, of um, Outcast. Actually, I might think I read the first two issues. Is it still the same creative team? Um, Paul Azakita on art and Kirkman writing? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yo, Kirkman has got probably have, like just buckets of money. He swims in money now. Uh, no, but I uh, just shout out to Kirkman. I do need to get around to reading Invincible. Everybody tells me that that book is so good. It and, is so and good. It's a Kirkman dude. title that nobody knows is a Kirkman title. Bruh, it's good. So I can only imagine any time somebody brings it up around Kirkman. I'm like, telling you, this dude machine. has a pool of money that he just swims in. You oh, are sure. a lucky bastard, Kirkman, and you're killing it. Can't wait to see that. And I didn't know that was going to be on Cinemax. Yeah. Awesome. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that one. And you know, uh, much like you, man, my heart is with the independent books. I've not, I've throughout this year, if you've been watching NRW, I really don't pick the big two too much. And when I do, there's probably a reason. And my pick this week is Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur number one from Marvel. Um, being written by Amy Reader, okay. who uh, was on Image Comics' Rocket Girl uh, with Brandon Montclair that I actually supported when they were trying to get that book to be released before it got picked up by Image. They had a whole Kickstarter campaign, and I supported it with them. And uh, now she's working uh, with Marvel on Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. And I really want it to do well because it just... It's an African-American character in Moon Girl, and then you have Devil Dinosaur, and I... For me, I'm, you know I have a little girl, and yeah. I want representation in comics. And to me, a female writer working on a female-led book with a character, it just has some cool elements that could, you know, despite the color and just yeah. being a little girl and, as men, that I think is just ripe for yeah. amazing stories. Yeah, and I, I love the contrast of, I mean, Double Dinosaur got, uh, got some publicity in the Secret Wars, and they it, used them really well, yeah. I thought, to get, introduce a whole new generation to this classic monster character. And now they're teaming her up with a little girl. Like, exactly. I mean, who's a super genius and also an inhuman. Yeah, well, who's not an inhuman? Bruh, though. exactly. And well, I'm saying, but with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and with inhumans getting so much yep. push and press, come on, man. Give Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur a chance. Because, you know, it's not, it's not got the glamorous Spider Man, X Men behind it or anything. Yeah, but people I mean, are going to pass it up on the newsstand. So I hope you, as a store manager, will push it a little bit see, as well. Here's what I don't, I think, I understand your hesitation there, but I don't think you're right on that. Just because in this new Marvel Universe, some of the better-selling books have been the books that haven't been titles before in oh, a really? long time, like Doctor Strange. Okay, that book's been selling well because people haven't seen Doctor Strange in a long time. True. So they're like, "Let me try it." Not inst instead of looking at, "Oh, an how many times have I heard? Is yeah. this Howard the Duck number one? Didn't they just do this?" Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the, it, it's a big. I mean, to the point of the unbeatable Squirrel Girl on the cover of the new number one, and it says only the second number Squirrel one. Squirrel Girl's year. doing well, right? As a store manager, you um, know. Yeah, she's a cult character that people are really picking up. It's just because she's one of those characters that breaks the regular boundaries. It's a Deadpool esque in a way that yeah. they don't take their book too seriously. They're there to entertain you, and they know that. So I don't have nothing to fear about Squirrel Girl. You shouldn't. All right, cool. Because and that's my fear with Moon Girl. So I shouldn't have to worry about Moon Girl. No, I, I think you'll be just fine. Marvel's done a really good job of keeping their stuff uh, broad for the ages. Uh, awesome. Not to say there isn't some stuff that the kids shouldn't right. read, but yeah. they're they're doing really good to try to keep this new universe open to everyone right now. All right, well I hope so. Natasha Bustos, I think, is on art. Natasha Bustos, whose art is amazing. Did you see some of the artwork for Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur? Um, I've just seen some of the preview panels, and it looks pretty interesting. I'm interested to see what they're going to do. Um, I think any book deserves its day to shine, so hopefully Definitely. if this is a strong team, it can be a strong title. All right, I hope so, man. You're hearing it from the store manager himself of Painted Visions. If you want to know the rest of our picks, 
Um, go to newreleasewednesday.wordpress.com for all of our other picks. So uh, top picks this week is uh, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur number one and Outcast Out 13. All right, y'all. You are watching the New Release Wednesday show. Adam Martin. Adam over here. Patrick Michael Strange. Make sure you uh, like us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Twitter at, at the NRW. NRW, y'all. Cost love. We're out of here. Peace.